Um, database design and normalization, I guess it's pretty, it, it's pretty challenging sometimes, but it's also quite fun when you get to um, design your databases. And, and also because of how you want to make sure that your data are, um, I guess, valid. Uh, they don't duplicate and your data are meaningful, right? So it takes a lot of effort to do that. Um, if you see, if you were to browse the um, all the tables inside the AdventureWorks database, you see that all those tables are very uniquely designed. That means that each table, which is the entity, it should only represent one object, right? You don't want to represent all all kinds of objects in that single table. Um, but if you're talking about BI, right, business intelligence, then that's exactly what you want. You want something that has a lot of information for you out there right in front of you so you can make your business decisions. And so when you go into BI, you actually kind of like denormalizing your data uh, back to very simplified uh, um, uh, stru data structure, okay, for that purpose alone. So you can see the data right away. And it's much faster that way also to query. Um, whereas if you have data in this state, in normalization, in, in normalized uh, state, then you have to connect a lot of different data together through the join statements, and that can take a lot of efforts, okay? But in terms of data integrity, that's what we need to do, and that is the um, recipe or the secret behind uh, creating very efficient data. So normalization here is <clears throat> the process of eliminating redundancy and decomposition, decomposing relations. The word decompose here just basically you break down, okay? You break down a really complex structure to each tiny, uh, tiny structure. If you think about programming, it's the same thing. You have a really big function uh, or a, a program to do something really big. It's much easier to maintain that or to um, solve those problems if you break it down to a really small part. So that's why in programming we have a function, right? A function does only one thing or one thing only. It does that very specific thing. And so in database, it's kind of the same thing. You break it down, decompose it into a really tiny, uh, a really um, uh, unique table or entity that has only one, only represent only one type of data, like right? for students, for your um, credit cards, for your phone numbers, for, your, for the states, okay? You don't want to mix everything into one data so the idea is to avoid having uh, subclasses inside a big class, okay? So you break it down so that each entity or each class is on its own. So that's the idea of uh, normalization. Um, to eliminate anomalies, okay, you have some anomalies if you have uh, a unnormalized data. And that means that when you try to remove data, when you try to add data, you have some issues. Uh, we'll see in a minute if you have some, we'll see some examples later on. <clears throat> so we have some anomalies here. You have the uh, deletion anomaly, you have um, insertion anomaly, okay, and you have re redundancy and so on. So <clears throat> some really cute phrases here uh, by E.F. Codd. He is probably the father of uh, normalization of uh, database relation here. So um, it has a really famous phrase. I forgot what it says, but something in the terms of like, um, oh, well it's, it's, it's a very common phrase. I can't remember what it is. It's about depending on the key. The key and only in, in the key, nothing but the key. I'll, I'll find that out somewhere. <clears throat> so again, the order of your tables is not important. Okay, it doesn't matter. The tables are not ordered, it doesn't, it's not important. The order of your columns is also not important. It doesn't really matter how you order inside your table. Um, that's not really uh, the issue here. Uh, tables need to be related, so that's why we have relational databases, right? This is the most common type of databases out there in the world today and probably in, in the future as well. Uh, you also have some non-relational databases. Those are your object type and your, for big data, right? You store videos and uh, we have the object-oriented or object-based uh, uh, type of database as well. But that's uh, another issue for another class. So <clears throat> here it just said table should describe one and only one entity, right? One thing, one object, one record about one thing. Um, so that means if you have a table to store 
the product, that should be only about that product. It should not be about the order stuff. It should be about anything that's not related to the product. Okay, so um, that's pretty clear. And <clears throat> all rows must be unique, right? You usually have a primary key. And again, column row order does not matter here, because you can sort the um, you can sort these when you do the query, right? So. <clears throat> Uh, two types of common data processing. You may heard, have heard this already, the OLTP and OLAP. Uh, one is used for like data warehousing, and that's usually used for um, analytical purposes because we have historical data for the OLTP, I mean, OLAP. The A is the anal analysis, analysis or analytic part. That means you have really old data back from like, I don't know, the 90s or 80s. How far you go back, it doesn't really matter. But the more data you have, the older they are, the better you can use those to make predictions. Right? If you think about the stock market, I mean, imagine that you don't have any data about uh, Google or Microsoft. I mean, how do you how do you plan to invest on those companies, right? So you go back, you know, years and years uh, based on those data, and those data should not be changed. Also, imagine you somebody go back to like 20 years ago and alter Microsoft's uh, data, and you have a, a different stock market, um, you know, prediction. That's that would be a very very um, uh, tragic. So, uh, and again, data integrity is, is, is important. So, <clears throat> this OLAP here is for um, analytical purposes. The OLTP, the online, online means it's live and always update. Uh, so, these are the more common ones you, see, you use today. Anything you, everything you go to Google, go to uh, Amazon, uh, go to shopping online, that's what the type of database they use. The OLTP. We're using right now is OLTP only. Okay, this is live business process. <coughs> um, so more information about those two types. The entity relationship diagram <coughs> is another word for entity relationship model. Those are two terms, kind of similar, but they mean differently. The model is, um, it's, it's a model that you use to build a database out of it. Okay, you can actually do that in some, programming languages like in Visual Basic, uh, well not Visual Basic but in um, SharePoint for example, you can model the actual database, just physically design that on your, on your IDE and then um, it will actually get translated back into code okay, using the model. Now the ERD here is something that we already kind of used already and, um, and at the studio, you can do that by going to the database design and then generate that uh, diagram. It tells you the relationship between uh, all those tables and uh, all these different types of keys and columns and so on. Okay, so just terminologies uh, we want to make sure we understand is that the entity type, <coughs> we have entity type, like what type is it, right? The customer type, salary, education. So this is actually the actual name of your uh, tables, right? And that's the type. So. Uh, it's like the class, if you think about in terms of programming, uh, object-oriented programming, it's the class. Um, and if you have taken Java, if you will take Java, for example, you will have a class called customer. You have a class for education and class for salary and so on. Okay, so that is the, it's like the prefab or the, um, the uh, blueprint. And then attributes is actually the description of that class because that class can actually generate entity which is the object itself right the actual object out of that class which is that entity like um, John is the entity of it's an object out of that class called maybe customer okay and then uh, this description will describe John's information his age his name his address and so on okay so just some different ways of how you can uh, visual entity and their um, information here uh, down here, these are the three common types of anomalies in an unnormalized database. Okay. What's an unnormalized database? So unnormalized database, uh, let me show you here. I put some information here as well in the um, learning units. I have some sample database in here. Um, so let me just go there really quick. Here I have... The unnormalized sample. This is something we did in, I think, a unit four or something. I don't remember, but something similar. 
Okay. <clears throat> a normal height is a table such as this. And this is not that bad. Okay, you see some are worse than this. Um, it's mm -hmm. a table or a, um, a database has these tables here, and this table here has a lot of information that are redundant. Okay, not only redundant, but um, have a lot of uh, data that you could take it up because this whole table here does not uh, describe about that employee, right? It has many other information in this table here. You can break it out and make them into their own separate tables. So therefore, if you follow those rules, a table should be only about one entity and it's not. Okay, it's about employee, it's about um, the, the, um, the title of the manager, right? Or his title. Um, it's about the pay code, right? This could be put into their own separate table. And the position information here, for example. Some may or may not. Okay, well, we'll look at this uh, later. Um, <clears throat> but that's what an anomalized table is. Another one here, I'll show you something we'll do to, together. Um, uh, this one here, if we have how much time we have, we'll see. This is another example of an unnormalized table. Uh, it's really nice, though. You can see it really, really um, nicely because all the information are there, which is okay if you were just to. Um, use this information just for you know reporting uh, purposes because it has all the all the information about the sales number the employee the addresses and the information here and they also that this customer or this sales employee could be like a, a car salesman for example he um, his his salary his commission this is the customer he sold the car to for example or he sold the Jeep their address the Jeep as a VIN number, uh, the description of some type of features here about the car, the cost sold, and then the date sold. This is something you want to present to uh, in a business meeting, right? But not something you want to store inside a single database table because it's not really good. Here it has a lot of information here. You have the, the sales order, you have the employee number information here, you have um, you know the customer information you have the uh, cars information here and so on so you have like three or four different categories or uh, classes nested inside this huge uh, class we call it sales order details okay so you want to break those out and normalize those uh, the reason is because if you don't if you don't do that let's just say that you know Bruce Wayne's quit his quit or something or you, you deleted his information then um, you, you will basically uh, has some issues in here. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. So if you if if you quit, then this information will be gone. But then now, you know who's who sold this car to what, right? So you lost that information. So you have what's called a deletion anomaly. Okay. Um, that's one of the uh, one of the rules over here. So we have deletion anomaly. You delete one row, and row may cause lost data or that would need it for other or future rows. Uh, update as well. If you change something, it can also cause information. And the insertion is the, ad the addition of, of uh, information here. So three common types of anomalies that need to be resolved uh, when you build, um, construct uh, databases. And you have two types of designs when you design your databases, kind of similar to programming too, right? very, very common. You have a top down and a bottom up. So uh, in the programming uh, paradigm, uh, usually when you build something using object oriented programming uh, method, you will use the bottom up because you build classes and then you go up that way. But in a sequential programming language uh, method, you will go top down. You build everything from the top down. So in database design, you can have, you can choose either way, whichever is easier for you. And not only that, it's also depending on what type of data that you have on hand, okay? If you were to build something from scratch, maybe you want to go from the bottom up. That means you go from the entity, from the attribute level, and then you, you have just list all the information about whatever it is, and then you collect those attributes, and then you group them together, and then you say, oh, you know what, these are information about the, a person. You group that, put it to a person's table. And then the other columns can be something else. So you go from the bottom up. And it's actually quite common in uh, a database design.
okay? Um, <clears throat> the top down will be like, you have a model already, you have a, a, a table of, let's just say, products or a sales order. And then in that order, uh, you have all this information like we saw earlier. It could be like a sales order, you purchase something from Amazon and they give you a, um, an invoice, right? So from that invoice, you have all this information and then you need to break that down into um, smaller uh, entities. So you're going from the top down if you have a really broad piece of data, okay? So um, two different approaches. But I, I think the more common one is probably from the bottom up because usually you will collect all these attributes, put them together, and then take them out, put into a separate table, okay? So uh, however you do it is up to you and again, depend on what you have to start with. And to build databases, you also need to understand the relationships between those. So when you have uh, a two tables, let's say you have a big table, you break it out into two tables. Now, how are they related in that sense, right? So which table should have the foreign key? Which table should have the primary key? So you have to decide that. And that depends on the type of relationship they have. Is it a one-to-one -one or is it one-to-many or many-to-many, -many, right? So a one-to-one -one relationship is one that where two entities or two tables um, are related by one and only one common column, common data, okay? You cannot share that data with any other uh, object. So for example here, a one-to-one -one would be like, um, if you have a few here, like uh, a you and your you have your social security number right so each person has their own unique social security number and, and no two persons can have one ssn number so when you do that you have a table for uh people or person and you have another table for ssn numbers and then you would link those together based on the ssn number so that each person has only one ssn so you have that a relationship called a one to one. Okay, you will see this um, notation here one colon one, and that's a, a one to one relationship. Okay, the one to many, this one here is, or sometimes many to one, depending on how you read it. It doesn't matter how which way you read it, but this is probably the most common ones. Okay. Um, because usually that is that's true right the one-to-one -one is kind of rare it's not that common you see that um, it's, it's you see that maybe very few tables will have one-to-one -one. things like um, SSN number is, is still an ID um, of that sort so for example you, you wouldn't have like a table where you and you have cars right a cars table and a owners table right you wouldn't have a one-to-one -one because chances are you can have more than one car, okay? And, and, and the car can be owned, well, by one person, of course, or if you own by two, I don't know, you have a uh, co-applicant, right? You have two owners. So that is it's not a one-to-one. -one. So quite rare. So the more co most common one is the one-to-many. And again, this is just means that you can have many things and that the other side of it will have um, can belong to only one entity. So again, one to M, the M just means many, or sometimes you see the word, uh, the character infinity, okay, the letter eight, that also means uh, one to many. Uh, you saw that in the diagram with, uh, with the uh, infinity sign. <clears throat> and you will see this kind of drawing, kind of similar here, it's not complete, but you have something like this, uh, with the box around it and then below this box you have another box attached to it um, where you have the actual attributes okay um, if I can find something like that let's see so yeah well let me see if I can edit this <coughs> How you, I'm not sure how easy this is, but no, yeah, this is not, not really nice. But there's some, um, if you go to like a lucid chart or some drawing, uh, some UML diagram drawing uh, applications, you can draw these out 
and it will look very similar to this. So the name on the top here is the actual column uh, table name, and then below that you have like different rows, uh, I mean different uh, uh, rows of text for the, the fields. And you have the lines connected to like this. If you just one straight line, that's a one to one. No other notation here or a special character, I mean special mark here. This one here, you see this um, crow foot here, or crow's feet, however they call it. Uh, this is a common a symbol meaning many. Okay, so we have a one, two, many. So that means if you look at this, this table here has um, the left table, the entity one is the table that has the primary key and the one with the three uh, lines over here, the crow foot over here is the one that has a foreign key. Okay, so the many side always have the foreign key. Okay, because um, you, can, you can link that to only one entity on this side. So this side will always have the primary key. This has the foreign key that, I, that is, is uh, linked to that entity over here. <coughs> okay. <coughs> and then of course you can also have the many to many relationship. And here we have the M colon N because I guess they just use a different notation. Um, it just means that you can have <coughs> uh, many to many. So this is some data here. Okay, so a bar sells many bears, and the bear is sold by many bars, right? So you have many to many. Okay. Um, <coughs> so a common one is like student enrolls in many classes, and that class can be enrolled by many students, right? So I have I have the students enrolled in, in, in this class by a lot of students, um, but a lot of students can also take this class as well. So we have many to many and the diagram just like this. So in this case, um, the diagram shows it this way, but you actually construct it, it's, it doesn't look, doesn't look like this. You actually ended up with three tables. Okay, you have a junction table right in between here that connects the two together. Okay, otherwise, there's no way to build this system uh, using just two tables. In other words, you have, a, you have a loop going on and it doesn't work because uh, if this is have a foreign key to this one here, uh, the primary key here, this has a foreign key to its primary key, then you have this dependency, right? So how do you know which one has the data first? So you have like, it's a, it's a loop going on and you cannot establish that type of relationship, okay? So therefore you need a internal table here to kind of combine them together. So you have three tables to, um, to make it work, okay? So, <clears throat> And then back to normalization here. There are the books mentioned that mentioned that about seven forms. Um, some would say five, but probably seven is, is correct. Uh, but in this class, we're just going to do up to three. Okay, these are, are just too complex, and and usually it's not very common. So most databases are normalized to the third form. We call those a third normal form, or three NF. Okay, so the one NF, second or the two NF, and the third NF. And then we have a one between here. We call this the voice cod. Remember, cod is the father of normalization. So voice is another uh, person. Did they actually um, name this after them? So voice cod normalization. Uh, this is the form between three and four. And then we have the fourth normal form, the fifth, and then we have the uh, sixth here. Okay, so a total of about seven. So we only do the three here, and which is very common, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and uh, these are the descriptions, not only descriptions, but the, the requirements. You have to meet uh, these certain type of criteria in order to say that your table is normalized to that form, okay? So we'll go over those. Uh, some benefit of that. So here it says, when a table is considered normalized, when we say the word normalized, we always refer to the third normal form, okay? So if your table does not meet the third normal form, it's not normalized, okay? Um, and we'll, 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 again, we'll explore what those are, but uh, just remember that normalized means third normal form, okay? At least up to that level. 
So let's look at the first normal form and look at the uh, rules or the criteria to meet this form. So it has <coughs> these rules here. You have to follow this. So you look at these rules when you normalize your table. Look at these rules and make sure that your table or all your tables, if you have multiple tables, meet this rule uh, in order to be um, uh, classified as first normal form. Okay. So in the, in the homework assignment, I ask you to do uh, to normalize the table into three, uh, three forms. The first normal form, second normal form, and third normal form. So you have to show me each, each normal form, what do the tables look like. Okay, uh, so you just kind of show you like step by step, so you know how to normalize a, a table. Okay, so the third, the first normal form, you have to have a primary key. Okay, so the primary key will determine the uniqueness of each row, right? So um, when you build your table, just decide which column should be the primary key that will make the whole row unique. Right? You cannot have duplicate data in that column. Then that will be your primary key. And you don't have to have one single row, right? Sometimes you can use two or three. You have a compound or a composite key as well to combine to make it unique, right? So it's up to you. And then you also have something called no repeating groups of data. Okay, each row or column, the intersection right here, or here, each cell basically, must contain one and only one value, not a set of values. Okay, that's a second rule. To be, to be qualified as the first normal form. So if you look at this table here, you see that um, this row here, I mean, you can kind of tell that this is pretty unique, right? This is not unique. Uh, these are not unique. So this could be uh, a really good candidate for the primary key. So you make that primary key, everything else can be unique in that row, right? So you pick that as the primary key, so that passed. And then if you look at the second rule, you cannot have uh, multi-value columns. So you look at this as one row, one type of data, one type of data, one type, one type, one type, and then here you have a bunch of data. Okay? These are not one value. You have a, a whole list, a whole range of different values that needs to be split and built into separate columns. That's you. Okay, so therefore this column here fails rule number two here so you cannot say this is the first normal form so what you do then is okay so you have to break this down into different columns so the first number here could be maybe a product code right and then the flange here will be like a product name the third will be the product weight and then will be like a, a cost and then description and then the whatever it is or well, yeah actually cost and then whatever it is here so again, you have one product, two product, and three products here, and you can have those different columns. So once you put those into separate columns, then um, you, you pass rule number two. And then also this is kind of repeating what the first one, the second one does, the um, atomic values, right? Contain only one, one data. So that is the first normal form, okay? So you need a primary key and you cannot have repeating data inside a column. <clears throat> so that must have only one value that would um, you know, make sense to this column here, right? So that's first order. <clears throat> so sometimes you, have the, you see the term repeating groups of data, it's the same thing. <clears throat> so to to um, um, use that, you can also have, let's see, repeating, no repeating groups of data. This is also another one, let's see, repeating data. Okay, well, th this is, is a little bit complicated, but um, we'll, we'll do some exa another example of a different table. So let's just talk about the second normal form. <coughs> So to meet the second normal form, your table or tables must have already met the first normal form, okay? So once you meet the first normal form, then you can think about the second normal form. Then the second normal form has pretty much just about one rule, one, one really important rule. It's about the primary key. 
Okay, so you can say that each column must depend on the whole key. Okay, so it's just the primary key. So if any column in here is not dependent on the primary key, then this rule fails. Okay, uh, what that means is that if you look at the primary key, can and then if this if in this example you have two primary keys here, um, two columns that's the primary key. So um, if you look at the order date, can you say that this order date is dependent on the primary key? If I look at the primary key 0, 1, 0, 0, and the 1 here, if I just look at this, can this determine the order date? Does it have anything to do with the order date? Does it have anything to do with the customer number? And so on. Okay, so if one of these columns does not depend on the primary key, then this rule fails. So therefore, what you do is you take that data out into a separate table. Okay? So everything here, every column must depend only on the primary key. Uh, that's what that's what the whole that's what it means, right? The whole key. Mm -hmm. Looks like the way it's written, it looks like there's two primary keys, but that's actually a compound primary key. Is that correct? Yes. Right. So this will be a compound or a composite uh, primary key. Yes. You can have multiple columns. Here, just two. You can have three or four. You can actually have the entire columns as as primary key, which is kind of weird, but you can. And when you build the con the junction table between two. Um, for the many to many relationships, that junction table can actually contain two rows or two columns, which are the foreign keys to each table, and they actually compound primary key for that table as well. We will see that, that later. So yes, a yeah, really, really good point. So that's the rule number two. Basically, each column must depend on the whole key. If it doesn't, break it out to a new table. And once you take that out, then you have to decide whether uh, which table should have the primary key, which one has the foreign key. So you can link it back <coughs> to this table again, right? Okay? <clears throat> so let's move on uh, to... Going back up to uh, that 82. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what are some of the keys that you would use to compound the primary key? Okay. Uh, well, if you look at this table here, uh, this way is... Let me zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, um, so the order number here, right? Order number and line number. I would say the order date does depend on the order number, right? If an order, it does have a date, so that depends on the order number. It does not depend on the customer number, or does it? The part number here. If you have an order, mm -hmm. would you want to know who ordered it? Yes. So the customer number is related, right? right. So it does depend on the order number. If you look at the part number, does that depend on the order number? If I look at this order number 1001, for example, zero, does it tell me about the part number? Mm -hmm. Or it doesn't? So if you, if you think about this, this part here, it doesn't really depend on the order number. Yeah. But how the description is not in order? Um, well, I, well, okay, I, I guess it does, huh? If it's an order, a part. Yeah, it, yeah right, I think it does. Yeah, if you think about it, it does. Because it is the actual product itself. Okay, so it does depend on order number, right? Uh, the description doesn't, right? But this one here doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So this one depends on the product number, right? So it doesn't depend on the order number. So you take this out. Okay. The quantity, I think that does, right? Depends on the order number. The price doesn't. The price depends on the product, right? And then the total price. Uh, it's also depend on the product and the quantity. 
cut off. So, so it doesn't. Or, or you can also say maybe it does depend on the order number, I guess, because order number has a total price. Okay, so it does depend on that one. But the weight doesn't. So the weight depends on the product itself. So you have some columns here that do not depend on that one. So every column must depend on these two primary keys here to, to qualify. Otherwise, it's not a, two, a second normal form. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it, it doesn't make sense until you just you take things out and you put it back again and, and so on. But, yeah. Okay, good question. So the third normal form... Um, so as you can see, we, we took the uh, order number and then we have the, um, the order details out. And then um, the third normal form has these two rules, three rules. So again, it has to be in a second normal form. So this like a, uh, this thing works in a progressive uh, manner. <clears throat> and then no column can have any dependency or another non-key column. I mean, this is like has a a lot of things to uh, in, in here. So that means um, a non-key column. Okay, a non-key column will be any other column besides the primary key, right? So we kind of uh, um, showed that already in the second normal form that the uh, weight is dependent on the uh, product and the product is dependent on the order. Okay, so um, so the weight and the product is not a primary key, it's not a key, so therefore you cannot have that in there. So this column called weight is depending on a non-key column called product. So therefore this, this rule fails. When that happens, you have to take that column out. Okay? <clears throat> So it must depend on the key, again, the primary key only. You have the third rule here, you cannot have derived data. So any calculated column, any column that can be calculated um, should not be in there. Like an example would be like a, a customer table have the birth date and the age, right? The age can be calculated based on the birth date. So therefore, you should take age out completely, because that can be um, uh, uh, rendered through the query, right? You just subtract the current date from the birthday, you get the age, okay? Same thing with the cost. If you see up here, we saw that the, uh, the total cost here, total price, uh, shouldn't be in here, because I can get that total price here based on the quantity multiplied by the unit price, okay? So this column should not be in here. You can do, eliminate this column completely. Okay. So it's because you have a, a, a calculated um, column. This one is fine because the weight, you cannot distinguish this from any other uh, things other than the product itself, so that's fine. So um, <clears throat> that's what these two, three columns mean. And that's all you have to do with to the third normal form. If, you, if your data, your records meet these three um, forms, then your data are pretty good. Okay, that means you don't have those type of anomalies we talked about earlier, the deletion, insertion, update anomalies. Okay, and then you just have to decide when you do that, you have to decide which table has the primary key or keys, uh, your primary key, and the fo which one has the foreign keys, and what type of relationship they have. Okay, uh, is it one to one or one to many or, or, or what? Um, so if it's one to one, one to many, it's not easy to it's not, it's easy to design. But if you have many to many, you have to think about the uh, intermediate uh, table that connects both together. So <clears throat> okay, um, you can read some more here. I just mentioned about the normalization here. Sometimes you have to do that for. Uh, especially for um, reporting purposes, okay? Because it's actually it's much faster to denormalize a, a, a really normalized table or tables into a, an a unnormalized table for the purpose of uh, reporting per reporting or making business decisions. And you would do this, and I guess one reason you would do this is let's just say you one of your tables doesn't have any you know constant updates to it. Right, so that table is always fixed. 
it doesn't make any changes in you know a, a whole year or a couple years always stays the same like your text table for example right so if you have that you can actually bring that column back to a second normal form so that your data will be um, query much faster even though that is not normalized to a third form and in terms of um, efficiency and uh, query speed that is actually the preferred way to do it so sometimes you can denormalize it just because you can uh, only just also because it's much uh, quicker that way as well Would you use Uh, yes, you can use views, but you use for a different purpose. Yeah, uh, views would be. You want to denormalize some of this information into something more simple. You know, sure. Yeah. Practice. Yes, you could. Right. You could use you could use views to uh, um, mm -hmm. to uh, you know eliminate this this process. So you can have everything in in the normal form, and then you build a view to kind of like uh, denormalize it so that. But not only that, though, for a view is you kind of restrict what the users can or cannot do to your data. So um, you can put some restriction in there so that viewers cannot know what the actual column is beside your the original table. So you kind of block that out. And they only see what you allow them to see. That's the purpose of the view. We'll, we'll get there when we, when we do that. You'll see that what, what that means. But great question. Okay, um, so... <clears throat> So here is this table again. Um, let me zoom out just a little bit. So back to this table, <clears throat> the unnormalized is the one here. You can see that we have the employee ID. This is a huge table, right? Just call um, employees table. Uh, you can see that if the first normal form says uh, we must have a primary key. So we can say employee ID is the primary key, right? column is unique. Um, it does not um, have any duplicate data in there, so that's good. Okay. Uh, we can also choose that maybe the ID and the name are the primary key. That's okay too, if you want to do it that way. Um, <clears throat> and then the second rule for the first normal form is that you can have repeating data. So if you look at this, we don't have any, we don't really have repeating data. We have some uh, data are repeating here, like the IT here, uh, news, news, and then so on. <clears throat> so you will have some. In this case, you will have um, update anomaly, right? Because when you change, let's just say, uh, the IT uh, department, instead of IT, you call it information technology, the whole word. In this case, now you have a problem because the name is not IT anymore. So you have an update issue because um, you have to go and change all these places, and, and that could be a problem. Um, okay, well, instead of doing this one here, I already have information. You can go and look at it, okay, each each form, and see if they are correct or not. If it's not, let me know. But I want to I want to do this one together with us um, for the rest of the evening. <clears throat>